Welcome to the Jocelyn Variety Show for Monday. Um, I'm Jack Newby. I'm the Executive Director of the Jocelyn Center. Um, Want to welcome you to Mindful Mondays and uh, give you a little update on what's happening here at the Jocelyn Center. And then we'll talk with Elise about mindfulness and some interesting things we've been talking about, about the history and um, why it's so important for to make mindfulness a part of your life. Um, coming up here at the Jocelyn Center, we're working on our new programs for the coming month of April. So if you're interested, um, please contact Melanie to uh, register. Um, Melanie Lyons, that's at 760-340-3220, extension 102. Tell you're interested in our art class um, or balanced conditioning. Um, our book club is continuing on a regular basis. We're doing chair yoga. So if you've been enjoying chair yoga, uh, be sure you sign up for this next month of April. Um, Fit After 50, um, our social chat group is going strong. We have Spanish lessons with Beatriz and Tech Buddies. Um, and also for those of you that may be having problems, uh, if you're trying to register or get an appointment for a vaccine for COVID and you're having difficulty navigating those websites, uh, give us a call here at 760-340-3220 and we'll connect you with one of our vaccine buddies uh, and they will walk you through that registration process uh, so you can get your appointment scheduled. Um, a lot is going on, going on here at the Jocelyn Center. We're looking hopefully at uh, some reopening or outdoor exercise classes in the next month or so. Uh, so stay tuned on that. Um, and without further ado, we want to uh, bring in Elise uh, so we can talk about Mindful Monday and a little bit about mindfulness and uh, the history that, that, that I found. Welcome, Elise. Hi, Jack. Happy Monday morning. Thank you. Hope you had a good weekend. I did, and I hope you did. I did. I was like, I told some people earlier this morning, I was like a slug, just <laughs> relaxing and reading a book. Um, so last week, I had the pleasure of one of our community partners, um, Eisenhower Medical Center presented one of their lectures. Um, and it was on reducing stress. Uh, the center point of that was really mindfulness and the history of mindfulness. Um, and I was actually surprised it, was, it came, maybe not surprised, but it, it started coming out and being a thing um, in the 70s. And it really was based on research to help people with serious chronic diseases. Um, Medical conditions. Yes. How did that come about? Um, the name that I know that started all of that was John Cabot Zinn, and he's a doctor at, he was then at UMass. I've not kept up with him, but he did or learned about research that showed meditation improving medical conditions, many of them. So at UMass at the time, if you had high blood pressure, they would suggest you go to this mindfulness group. And it, it was um, nothing to do with religion. It wasn't mystical it was just meditation which helped and they show and it's still shown evidence to help all of these medical conditions did she mention some of those i know well, hypertension <laughs> yeah the high blood pressure mm -hmm. but heart disease yep. um a lot of the, the digestive problems that we have that a lot of those are as a result of stress absolutely Stress works on the whole body. It, it, can, it affects like every organ in the body, um, just like alcohol does. Um, every, it affects your whole body. So um, anything that's going on with you physically or medically is exacerbated by stress. And sometimes stress can just be the cause and create those problems. Well, I think kind of, what I learned, and, and I, I've heard it before, but it's still always a good thing to think about is stress really comes about, it's, it's the automatic response from when we were, you know, living in the forests <laughs> um, and our life depended on something and it, it was the fight or flight 
um, hormones that are pumped into our body and we're not even aware of it. Absolutely. Um, if you didn't, you would get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger <laughs> or, a, or a bear or whatever. And so, yes, those of us who did not pay attention to that in those early times probably didn't live to recreate. <laughs> so, or, or have, you know, have children recreate. And so um, we have been bred to pay attention to the things that are dangerous. And, and now we, for us, you know, sometimes the things that our mind interprets or, you know, pumps those um, hormones or whatever they are into our body that increases our heart rate and our respiration and upsets our, our digestive system and causes high blood pressure and all of these other things, mm -hmm. you know, could be because we're frustrated at a stop sign. <laughs> Exactly. Or, or we're running late or something like that. And it's an automatic thing. So how does mindfulness and meditation relate to reducing this stress and, and really reducing some of these health problems we have that may not need all the chemicals and, and, and prescriptions that we receive for them? True, true. Actually, that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today. Okay. Can we go ahead with that? Yes, we can. Is there anything else you need before we go ahead? No, I will let you go. Thank you. All right, here we are. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want you to know I've been thinking about this group and looking forward to being with you. I, that means I'm kind of getting used to not being able to see you, which you know has been a challenge for me, but I think about you. What did you, oh, first let's do our breathing. Three deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. If you can move at the same time, all the better. In through the nose, out through the mouth. One more, in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Good job. Doesn't that feel good? What did you think of last week's crash course on meditation? I must say, I can always like something where there's no way to fail. <laughs> so I had some additions, and they kind of speak to what Jack and I were just talking about. So I'm reminding you that no, you can't fail because if you intend and you try, that is success. There's no judgment on it, negative or positive. Think about that. Even if you meditate well, we don't focus on how well you meditated. If you think you meditated poorly, we don't focus on that. We go with the flow. Here's the thing. It's not an ambitious endeavor, okay? Our lives are full of ambitions to get to the grocery store, to get home, to get the groceries unpacked. Meditation, that's not what it is. We accept whatever our meditation is like as long as we're trying. And we just try to totally accept whatever our meditation is and avoid self-criticism. And you'll like this. If we aren't able, are not able to accept whatever it is, we accept that. So if we have to criticize ourselves, we accept the self-criticism and don't make a big deal out of it. And the idea here is to transpose this whole frame of self-acceptance, accepting what it is onto our lives. You don't meditate to become a good meditator. And here we're going back to our health and our life and our body. We meditate to be more in the flow, to be peaceful. So when we're peaceful and accepting what is, instead of fighting against it, that stop sign or um, the line at the cashier, if we don't fight against it, we don't get cortisol. That's the one that being scared and anxious and ambitious gets into our blood, cortisol. And that exacerbates every medical condition. Our body doesn't like it. The only time our body needs cortisol is if we're really being threatened. And then we hope that we do react very fast. Other than that, we have to try to get rid of the old 
the old um, primitive ways of reacting to things that don't apply anymore. There aren't saber tooth tiger tigers, you know, around every tree. So when we're meditating, our attention turns from breath, when our attention turns from the breath awareness, wait, so meditation is breath awareness, sitting still, taking a few minutes, and being aware of our breath. When our attention turns away from our breath awareness, which it will, because that's what our minds do, they think. And that will happen. So as soon as we realize it, say, oh, I'm thinking about the movie I saw last night. You just bring it back to you. Oh, but I'm supposed to, um, I'll just be aware of my breath again. You could do that a hundred times in 20 minutes. You could do it 10 times in one minute. And that's success. Every time you realize that your attention has strayed from what you mean intend for it to be on, which is the breath awareness, that's a moment of mindfulness in and of itself right there. That's mindfulness. Oh, I aren't, I'm not, I aren't, I, I'm not doing what I said I was going to do. I'm not being aware of my breath. Ah, let me go back to breathing and being aware of my breath. And I think I said this last week, I want to say it again. Breathing, um, breath awareness is not thinking about our breath. It's not, I'm aware of my breath. I'm aware of my, uh, I'm breathing now. That's not what it is. It's not, we try not to make it that. What it is, is just being with our breath. So you just be aware. Let's try that for a minute. And there are other things to be aware, aware of too. And you don't have to be into meditation to try this or listen to all of these ideas. You can do it without having a formal meditation practice. But let's just do for a minute to um, show what we're talking about. First of all, breathe, deep breath. You can close your eyes if you want to. Sit comfortably in whatever you are, wherever you are. And breathe and be aware that you're breathing. So what does that mean? It means feeling your body going in and out like the balloon, hopefully, that we've talked about. In meditation, although when I'm doing the breathing, in the, when we do it in the beginning, I suggest in through the nose, out through the mouth. In meditation, you wanna breathe through your nose if you can. And you wanna keep your lips together teeth apart. You don't go like, the <laughs> it's meditation, we want to relax. So we keep our lips together, but teeth apart. Let's try that for a second. Hmm. And you be aware that of what your body's doing, that's breathing. So your chest might be going up and down, hopefully your belly sometimes goes up and down, but you don't try there is no ambition in the way that you breathe. When it comes to meditation, we forget about all the try to breathe and make a balloon or whatever. Then you just let your breath do the work. Very relaxing, actually, and that's the point. You just breathe however you breathe and you accept whatever it is. Uh, let's see. I didn't tell you last week that I actually do meditate. I've been meditating on and off since I was a teenager, way back when, um, well over 50 years ago, I went for a TM, Transcendental Meditation, and it was all very interesting. I did it for a number of years. It was very helpful. And then, you know, life happens. I didn't realize I should have continued it. And then I picked it up a few times on and off throughout the years. But when I moved here eight years ago to the desert, I saw a magazine um, in the newspaper an ad for a meditation and uh, I went and I've been going ever since. Uh, it's connected to Buddhism, but again, not as a religion. Uh, the meditation part of that, although um, Buddhism tells you all about these ways of living. There's no God or anything to believe in, but the meditation is just, um, so helpful. And I've been doing it ever since.
for eight years every day. I'd say I do it about, what did I write? 99.5% of the time. In eight years, maybe I have missed 10 times. Um, and some for being really sick and, you know, or preparing for a colonoscopy, right? I'm not going to meditate then, or although it might be helpful, or um, sometimes I have just forgotten because I'm having too much fun. And that's allowed. <laughs> but basically, I meditate every day for 20 minutes. I, you can start much less than 20. You can try one minute, um, five minutes. But the regularity of doing something like it on every day is what's most helpful. You get familiar with it and you get better at it and feel more comfortable with it. So, and it helps you more. So anyone who's having a lot of health problems, um, there you go, meditation and mindfulness. And here's a pop quiz. Where is that moment of mindfulness when you're meditating? or just when you're living and trying to focus on something, where's that moment of mindfulness? Give you two seconds to think of it. It's when you realize suddenly that you're not doing what you intend to do. So if you're washing the dishes and then you're like, oh, I wonder what I'm having for lunch. Oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be washing the dishes. That's a moment of mindfulness. And related to this, last week I asked, why do we not see the full reality of things? And I hope you entered into the chat section then. And today I'd like you to do that again. If you've thought of some reasons why when we're in reality, in our lives, we don't see everything. I'm gonna give a few of my um, answers. We often don't see the full big picture because either we're too busy, we're, think, we're in the past or in the future. We can be avoiding seeing realities we don't like. We make assumptions. And there are probably many other reasons that each of us does not see the full reality. And that really speaks to slowing down and mindfulness is about slowing down and just being in this moment. I think up until recently, I've talked a lot about being in the moment. And this is what we're talking about, being in the present moment and doing what you intend to be doing and only that in the present moment. So I hope you are also continuing to fight isolation and increase your movement. Please write in the chat now um, what you've done with either of these. I'll give a couple seconds for that. Oh, and what effects you may have noticed if you're fighting isolation, um, what effects you might have noticed? Uh, I have to tell you that I'm doing it because I talk to you about it every week. I can't live my life without doing what I tell you to do. So I hope you're practicing with me. I trust that you are. And increasing movement. I never told you that um, one of the things I've started to do, or maybe I did, is um, take a class only when I'm awake at 5.30 in the morning uh, on public TV. It's called eccentrics, E-S-S, -S, not eccentrics, although I could be considered eccentric, couldn't we all? But it's called eccentrics, E-S-S-E-N-T-R-I-C-S, -S -E eccentrics. 5.30 in the morning, public TV, and when I'm up, it's a very good class. It's gentle, but hard at the same time. And um, you don't have to injure yourself doing this. I used to go to um, gym classes and I stopped because whenever the teacher said, do more, go harder, I'd say, okay, and end up injured. <laughs> this one, she's very, she talks to you a lot about don't do more than you can and when to stop, but it is, it's not by nature a very, well, you, if you ever see it, or you could look it up online, eccentrics. And then I'd like you to enter, if you've gotten some things accomplished this past week, please put those in the chat right now. And then I'll tell you about my desk. <laughs> I think my desk is a barometer of my life. I could just go, anybody could go look at, the state of my desk, which is actually quite small, 
and um, know how I'm doing. Right now, the, it has a rolled, it's an old fashioned roll down, uh, a fold out top, and then you put the top back in. And right now the top's actually back in. I've gone for months where there was so much on it, the top just stayed out all the time. So that's good for me that, the, that it's closed right now. Okay, I think that's good. Oh, I knew what else. So we talked about horoscopes last week. I have them all written down here. So if anybody wants to talk more about that, I can go back to this page. I went ahead and copied down the summary for each sign and then whether each sign is fire, air, earth, or water. So, oh, and, and signs are either generally male, positive, self-expressive, or female negative self-containing, whatever all that means. But if you're interested, let me know, email me, and we will um, pursue that sometime. Uh, we do have some fun questions, but first I wanna make sure to give you the dates of our next programs. Our Aging Mastery is currently going on. That's the 10 session one, I bet you know this. Some of you might, not, might even be in Aging Mastery, it's really great. The next one starts April 13th and it goes through May 13th. And Aging Mastery gives you all those chapters and categories that you need as you grow older, things you need to know and do. The Brain Boot Camp's been very busy. We have one now, that's the two weeks in a row. The next one is March 24th and 31st. Um, they're always from one to 2.30. So the next one's March 24th and 31st. The one after that's April 7th and 14th. The one after that is April 21st and 28th. Then we have three more planned, but I'm not gonna read all those dates too. We have one more in, one in May and two more in June. But the next one is March 24th and the one after that starts April 7th. Okay, fun questions. Huh. What's the, one of the best things that's ever happened to you? One of the best things that has ever happened to you. And you can type this right into the chat. You can think about it. Hmm. I find, I can't think of it right now. I did not prepare my answer and I can't think of one. What's one of the worst things that ever happened to you and how did you overcome it? I can think of some bad things that have happened to me. One was a, a major surgery. One was, another one was like a major illness. And all of those that happened, I really um, breathed, <coughs> breathed through it and talked to myself and said, you're gonna do this, you have to do this, it'll be okay. I think that's how I kind of got through it. But, it didn't end with saying that once. It, it takes time for it to be okay to, to overcome it. And what's one nice thing you have planned for yourself today or this week? And if you don't have one, please take a moment now to pick something, even small. Remember, pick something easy, low-hanging fruit, and um, do it. Okay? Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, Jack, you're on again. Well, thank you, Elise. That was great. You know, one of the things that we like to do at the Wellness Center is, is say it's a holistic program. Mm -hmm. um, and it all works together. The classes, uh, mindfulness, learning about different things, becoming aware of how things impact your life, um, how exercise impacts your life. It's too often, I think sometimes we look at things, if I would just exercise more, this would happen. Or if I would just meditate more, this would happen. And it's really bringing it all together as a part of, as a part of our life, as a regular part of it. So that's a really important part and, and a unique part of um, the Jocelyn Wellness Center. And I just want to mention, we do have coming up, I don't have the dates in front of me, but um, you can check our website. Our A Matter of Balance classes are coming up. Um, with Suzanne uh, Spencer, and she will be leading those classes. Um, and, and it's a great opportunity to, to, again, 
most people fall because they're not being mindful and aware of what they're doing at the moment. Um, and sometimes I tell people, um, unfortunately, the few times that we've seen people fall out here in front of the Jocelyn Center, it's because they tried to take that 15 second or five second shortcut um, and miss the curb or miss the rock uh, through, the, through the landscaping. So it's really learning how to um, be mindful of where you're at, be aware of your situation um, and be safe. So thank you for uh, leading us through Mindful Mondays. And uh, we will be back on Wednesday with the Jaws and Variety Show. Uh, Melanie has a great uh, program for you on Wednesday. And um, we will see you then. So thank you and have a great week.